Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Daily IoT. On today's episode, I wanna talk a little bit about sleeping and microcontrollers, specifically the particle photon, which is at the heart of our stat tracking puck project. I was working on the next phase of this where I wanted to try to go into a sleep mode in between the uh, times that I check in with the back end to get updated stats. Remember I was doing this where I was checking for stats every five minutes, but I wasn't doing anything uh, low power. In, in other words, I was grabbing the stats from low sant and then just doing a delay for five minutes, which means everything on the photon is still running. The Wi-Fi is still running uh, and everything else is still happening. It's just sitting there waiting for five minutes to pass and then it will go and grab it again. And I got, again, like I said in the last episode, five hours of consistent check-ins every five minutes, eight hours total where I was right around that brownout stage. And for a total of, I think it was like 57 total check-ins. And so when I moved on to the next phase of this, I wanted to, instead of just sitting there in a delay state, I wanted to sleep so that I could see how much we could extend the battery life. Remember, it's a 400 milliamp battery that's in this. And I wanted to see how much we could extend the battery life by doing a sleep. And then I quickly found that sleep isn't always sleep, at least as I understand it, on the particle photon. And this caused me quite a bit of confusion. I finally was able to figure it out. And so on today's episode, I wanna share that knowledge with you. Now, this is not going to be an in-depth dive on all of the sleep options that are available to you on the particle photon, because there are quite a few, but I just wanna uh, cover Sorry, my heat's turning on, if you can hear that. I do wanna cover just the, the trip up that I ran into and hopefully clear up a little bit of confusion around sleep in the particle photon in your project. Before we start talking about the various sleep modes, it's very important to understand what's actually going on under the covers in the particle photon. And this is really the reason why I got tripped up on the different sleep modes is, and that's because Historically, I have done some microcontroller programming, whether that was PIC microcontrollers or even the Arduino, where sleep applied to the microcontroller. So you were sleeping some form of the main microcontroller, whether that was peripherals or the main CPU to stop instruction execution. But from the block diagram here for the photon, we can see that this is the, the block diagram for the P0 module. So if you consider this outside blue line really as our photon, we have two things going on here. We have the STM32, which is the microcontroller, the brains of the photon, but we also have the Broadcom Wi-Fi module. And the sleep calls for the photon encapsulate both of these ideas, and that's why it can be a little bit confusing. So this is important to remember as we go and look at the documentation. In the documentation here, I'm just in the reference um, firmware section for the photon, and I'm down under system calls, and I'm on sleep. And you can see that the sleep section has quite a bit of information. And there's a lot of things here. And now understanding how it works, I, I feel like the documentation's better, but before I understood how it worked, I felt like it was a little bit confusing. And so remember, in my project, the Puck project, I want to reach out to Losant, grab stats, and then return and go to sleep for some period of time. In my testing, that's five minutes. And so I don't wanna do anything for that five minutes, shut everything down, and then reach out and do another web call. Well, the first thing that uh, I found here was this system.sleep. And you give it a number of seconds. That sounded like what I wanted. Now it does say, does not stop the execution of application code is a non-blocking call. Application code will continue running while the Wi-Fi module is in standby. And so if I would have stopped there and just taken that at face value, I probably would have understand, uh, understood a little better. But I kept reading, as I always try to do. I try to understand all of the docs before I move on. And I made it all the way down here to the bottom. And it says, since firmware version 0.5.0, which we are beyond, we are on like 0.6.3, I think. Uh, it says in automatic modes, which you are by default on the photon, if you don't change anything explicitly, you're in automatic mode, the sleep function doesn't return until the cloud connection has been established. And so when I read that, I thought, oh, okay, so sleep should wait until the sleep period is up because I'm in automatic mode and the cloud connection will be reestablished. 
And then it says this means that application code can use the cloud connection as soon as sleep returns. And so I, I read those two things that when taken together, it's a little bit hard to understand, uh, at least for me it was, where I thought, oh, I get what this is saying up here where uh, it says does not stop the execution of application code, but I assumed that that meant for semi-automatic and manual mode. It does not, it applies to all of the modes. And so let's see how that works right now. Let's take a look at this example code that I've written. It's very short. We're gonna come in and we have the setup function. We're gonna open up our serial connection and do a running setup code. This will just print out to the console to let us know that we've executed the code in our setup function. Then we're gonna come straight down into our loop print out start sensor read. We're gonna have this unrealistic delay where it takes three seconds to do some sort of sensor processing. And then we're gonna print out end sensor read. After that, we wanna to go to sleep. So I'm gonna print out going to sleep. And then this is where we're gonna play around with our different sleep mode calls. For five seconds is what we're gonna mess around with today. You can be any duration of time. And then we have uh, a print of end of loop. And so this should be printed out when we get to the end of our loop function. And then uh, if you're unfamiliar with the photon and how this code works, as soon as we execute this line of code, we're gonna come right back up to the top of loop and we should see a start sensor read print out again. So this is the code that we're gonna be playing with. And now let's take a look at how the different sleep modes work. So I have on my desk here a particle photon. It's breathing magenta, which means that it is in safe mode ready to accept a firmware from the cloud. And I have what we're gonna use for our first test is the system.sleep5, where it says it will continue to run application code. And we will go ahead and flash this, and we will get our terminal ready. And we'll do a particle serial monitor. And as soon as it flashes green, I'm gonna to connect to that, and let's see what it prints out. Okay, so running setup code, start sensor read, end sensor read. And you can see we're just going through, the only delay we're getting here is from our delay for our sensor read. Nothing is stopping execution of the code from that system.sleep. But if you look at the photon, it is breathing white. I'm not sure how well the white LED is coming across on the video, but white breathing LED means that the Wi-Fi module is shut down. And so we are not connected to the particle cloud or to our local network at this point. And so what is happening is, as soon as we call this system.sleep over here in our code, the Wi-Fi module turns off, but then we continue execution. We're gonna come right back up. And even before this wakes back up in five seconds, since there's only a three second delay here, Two seconds before the Wi-Fi module wakes back up, we are telling it to go back to sleep for five seconds. So if you've done this in your code, you are now uh, unable to flash code remotely to your device because it will never reconnect to the Wi-Fi or particle cloud unless you reboot and then there will be a small window until it gets back into this state. And so to get it out of this state so we can reprogram it, we're gonna hold down both buttons let up the reset button. When it flashes magenta, we'll let up the other button. And then it will go back into a breathing magenta mode so we can program it again from the particle IDE. All right, so that's how system sleep just passing a number works. It really, to me, is a bit of a misnomer. I think it should be called something more explicit like system dot sleep Wi-Fi or suspend Wi-Fi or something like that to where this has nothing to do with, if we look back at our block diagram over here, this really has nothing to do with the STM module. It's still running and churning and doing everything it does. That first sleep call just puts this thing into a low power state to where we're not connected to the Wi-Fi. So uh, a little bit of confusion there, at least for me um, in the naming. Okay, so let's comment that out, come back to our documentation. Now we have this next one where we can do the same thing where we can specify a number of seconds, but we pass this sleep mode deep as the first argument. And this says it can be used to put the entire device into a deep sleep mode in which the device shuts down the network subsystem and puts the microcontroller in a standby mode. And so the second point of confusion that I ran into in the documentation is you have 
this concept of I'm putting it into a standby mode here. And if you come down um, to some of these other ones, like this version of the sleep mode, it says puts the microcontroller in a stop mode. Well, what's the difference between stop mode and standby mode? It doesn't really tell you in the documentation other than the little blurb right after using and dropping those terms. And so that was a little confusing to me as well. What is stop mode and standby mode? Well, back to our block diagram, these are STM32 terms, the microcontroller inside the photon. And so if you wanna learn more about those, you actually have to come to the data sheet and it will tell you we have a sleep mode on the STM, a stop mode, which is clearly identified and explained here, and a standby mode. And so this is what the documentation is referring to, and they sort of copy and paste some of this, but again, I felt it was a little unclear of what we were talking about between stop and standby mode. So I will put this stuff down in the description so you can see that, but that is what the documentation is referring to when it says stop and standby mode. Okay, back to sleep uh, mode deep. So what this is gonna do is shut down everything, and then it says, when the device awakens from deep sleep, it will reset and run all user code from the beginning with no values being maintained in memory. And so coming back over here, we're gonna uncomment the, the deep sleep version. What it's saying is, after you execute this line and it waits for five seconds, it is going to restart essentially the photon. It's not going to continue executing your code. And so we should see that in our program. We should see going to sleep, but then we should never see end of loop. It should come right back up to running setup code. And so go ahead and save that. Our photon is in uh, safe mode. And let's go ahead and flash it. And remember, as soon as the green light starts flashing on the photon, that's when you can connect with the serial monitor and see what's going on. So I'm gonna hit serial monitor. It's open successfully. Okay, we get running setup code, start sensor read, end sensor read, going to sleep. So now we never got to end of loop. And now you can see my photon is restarting here with the flashing green. So let's see this happen. Uh, We'll clear the screen, wait for it to go to sleep, and then when it wakes up and we get the flashing green again, let's reconnect, and you'll see as it comes out of that sleep mode, we come right back up to running setup code. So we never hit the end of loop here on our code, and that is how deep sleep mode works. It's going to basically shut down your photon and pick things back up from the very beginning. You'll never get to that. And the documentation does say that. It says, as such, it is recommended that deep sleep be called only after all user code has completed, which is a good tip. Okay, so that could work for my Puck project. I could read the stats from the API and then do a deep sleep and just have the whole thing start over. That would be fine. However, and that's probably actually what I'll end up doing. That's gonna give me the best low power um, battery life by going into deep sleep. However, if I wanted to, for some reason, maintain uh, registers in SRAM, so if I had stored any variables or anything like that, I'm gonna lose them and I'm gonna to have to recalculate everything if I had a lot of heavy work going on before that. And so what you might need is something in between where I do a, a sleep and I actually stop executing and then after the time, I pick back up and continue while also getting low power advantages. And for that, we need to look at some of these other options. So if we scroll down here, the next option in the documentation says that we can do a sleep, but then it's looking for a wake up pin in trigger mode. So this idea of an external interrupt that will wake the photon from sleep and have it start executing instructions again. Well, I don't really want to trigger it from an external interrupt. I want it to be a set amount of time in my scenario. And so that's not going to work for me. But if we scroll down a little bit more, we have the same signature as the previous sleep that has this wake up pin in trigger mode, but it also has a seconds argument at the very end. And this will allow us to go into a sleep mode. Again, the stop mode, standby mode, is it's gonna shut down everything on the photon and restart. Stop mode is it's going to stop execution of your user code, wait for an external interrupt or the amount of seconds to elapse, and then it will pick up where it left off. And so this 
is exactly what we'd want in that scenario where we want to maintain variables and things like that. So we're gonna uncomment this. We have, um, in my case, I don't really care about the pin and the edge mode, so I just picked D0 and rising. And that's where it would be nice if we had a concept similar to the first sleep that worked like this version of sleep. And that, again, was part of my confusion. I would love to be able to call it like this sleep and have it behave like this sleep. Okay, so let's see this in action. We're gonna go ahead and flash this onto our device, come back into our console here, get ready to attach to it. Again, as soon as the green LED flashes, that means that we can connect and we should see our running setup code. And then start sensor read, takes three seconds, end sensor read, going to sleep. We've lost the connection. As soon as it flashes green again, we're gonna reconnect and you'll see the first thing we get is end of loop. And so it literally picks up right where we left off and executes the code after our sleep. And so that's really a, a brief overview of three ways that you can sleep. And again, I still consider this first one a bit of a misnomer. It's not sleeping in a traditional microcontroller sense. It is really sleeping just the Wi-Fi module. This is not something you'd probably want to use in line ever because you're going to keep executing code. Um, and so it's more of a use this when you want to turn off the Wi-Fi module. Uh, use these other versions when you want to actually shut down and get um, even deeper power saving uh, benefits from the microcontroller itself. Now, to be fair, the Wi-Fi module is using a ton of power. So this version of sleep is going to save you quite a bit of power just by sh shutting down that Wi-Fi module. And again, you'll get the, the breathing white LED on your photon. And so that's just a, again, a brief overview of the different sleep modes. Hopefully that clears up some of the confusion for you. All right, so that's it. A little bit of confusing. Like I said, I probably would have called uh, the the sleep that just shuts off the Wi-Fi something different. It's not a sleep as you would traditionally think of it in the sense of a microcontroller or hardware platform because uh, lots of things are still happening there. So uh, that's going to do it for today's episode. Question of the day. We're talking about sleep and hardware platforms. How much sleep do you try to get every night? I think my target's somewhere around like six and a half hours to seven hours is pretty good. Any more than that and I'm wasted the rest of the day, which is funny, like oversleep makes me more tired. And any less than that and I'm, I'm not running on all cylinders. So how much sleep do you try to get every night? Thanks so much for watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the internet of things one day at a time. One more thing before you go, if you find value in the show, I would really appreciate a subscription. Hit that button, uh, it would mean a lot to me. Also, I have been posting quite a bit of things on my Instagram feed. I do Instagram stories while I'm doing projects sort of behind the scenes and also things in my feed, um, stuff I'm learning and things like that. So if you want more daily IoT, you can find it there. It's a great thing to look at when you have a few spare minutes waiting for the bus or other things. So uh, I really appreciate, again, everybody watching. Thank you so much, and I hope you have an awesome week.